Hi, my name is Rhonda Slater. I am founder of Pierced by Love, which exists to bring people into intimacy with Jesus through corporate gatherings, small group, discipleship, and individual uh, inner healing and deliverance sessions. So I'm so glad you're here. We started a study. So we have one uh, part of this series that we've already done. This is going to be a four-part series, and this is number two. So if you have not watched number one, I highly recommend it. It gives like an overview of what we're talking about here and um, gives you some truths as to what it is like or or how do we go about loving God with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength. And I'm going to kind of break that down for you in um, a few sessions, a few podcasts. And this one um, is going to be talking about a pure heart. So that is referenced from 1 Timothy 1.5. And I talk a little bit about uh, how I connect those two in the first podcast but 1 Timothy 1, 5, this is Paul's letter to his spiritual son, Timothy. He says the aim of our charge or the ultimate goal, right, is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. And so I believe that what Paul is telling Timothy there is this is how you love well. This is how you do this Jesus following life is you love God with everything that you are. And out of that overflow, you love others. But this is how you do it. A pure heart, good conscience, and a sincere faith. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about a pure heart. And how, how do you get a pure heart? What does that look like? Well, a pure heart. Well, let's talk about what a heart is. First of all, heart is not just the organ that pumps blood throughout your body. That's that's one one definition of heart, right? But most of the time when the Bible is talking about heart, it's talking about something a little bit different. And this is how uh, it, it's it's our thoughts and our feelings is what it is. The original word in the Greek is, is thoughts and feelings. It's cardia, cardia. And the lexicon describes it like this. It's the center and seat of your spiritual life. It's the fountain and seat of your thoughts, your passions, your desires, your appetites, your affections, your purposes, and your endeavors. So the things that you want to do, the things that set you on fire, the way you want to do life all flows out of your heart. Jesus said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So whatever's in your heart, that's what's going to come out. You've heard the saying, like when you get squeezed, when something tough is happening, then you see whatever's inside comes out, right? We can hold a mask on, but as soon as it gets really hot, we, we have to throw it off. And what's really inside of us, people will see. And so that's why it's important to have a pure heart is so that when you are squeezed, that the goodness of Jesus just comes out, his peace, the fruits of his spirit, right? Doesn't mean that you won't experience emotions that, like grief or anger at times, but we don't stay there. And we don't have those emotions tied to uh, triggering and things from our past. Those emotions have been sanctified and they're aligned with God's heart because God experiences emotions too. So, right. So if anybody tells you that emotions are bad, that's not, that's not right. Now we shouldn't live by our emotions. I agree with that, but we want to feel what we believe. You can feel Jesus. You can feel his peace. You can feel his joy. I think it was Eric Gilmore that said, who wants a peace that you can't feel? <laughs> so true. So true. So anyway, we're living, we're loving God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And first of all, we're going to go after a pure heart. So when we're doing all, by the way, none of these three things are solo. They always all work together. And you'll see as I break each one of them apart, you'll see how they can all work together. They work in tandem for you to keep maturing and growing in the Lord so that you can get to this place where all of this uh, goodness is flowing out of you. And this is not, I don't want to bring you to a place where there's more striving and something else you need to put on your Christian to-do list. That's not my, my goal. 
In fact, you need to take that Christian to-do list to Jesus and see what things maybe you need to mark off, right? We want to, his, his yoke is easy. His burden is light. So that's the place I'm trying to get you, my friends. I'm not trying to get you to a place where you have more things you've got to do. I'm trying to get you to a place where his abundant life, Jesus's abundant life flows freely out of you. So you hear the cliche, follow your heart. And it's really a dangerous cliche, especially when you have a heart that has not been sanctified. When you've been hurt, you've been wounded, you've been lied to, you've been betrayed, you have things in your past that have really come after you. And you're taking an inventory in your heart subconsciously about all the things that have happened to you. And how do I protect myself from happening that happening again? And that's not wrong. We, we are not made to uh, carry all that hurt and all that baggage. We're made to walk in the garden with the Lord. That's what we're made for. But at some point, you have to allow Jesus to be the protector of your heart. You have to lay down those guards. You have to start believing truths about who you are and let go of that past baggage. So once your heart starts getting healed and the lies are exposed and replaced with his truth, then you can start partnering with the Holy Spirit in order to do kingdom things on the earth from a pure and clean heart, right? So let's talk about the body, the soul, and the spirit, the spirit, soul, and body, whatever order you want to put it in, right? That is what we're made of. We're made of three parts. When you receive Jesus, he kills off your old man, just like he died on the cross, right? Go back to Romans 6, and then he resurrects you into a new man. You're now a new creation, and he marries your spirit with his spirit. He melds them together so that when the Father looks at you, you are spotless, pure, and blameless before him right now, even though you messed up yesterday, even though you made a bad choice this morning. He looks at your spirit and says, man, you look beautiful because you're covered in the blood of Jesus, right? But the soul has been wounded. It's been lied to. It's been betrayed. It's gone through heck, <laughs> right? And so your heart and your mind have learned how to survive in this world. Now, once we get those things healed up and you can only do that through Jesus, but once we get those things healed up, they can partner with your spirit and your soul and your spirit can be working together in harmony to do beautiful things in the world. So how do you go about doing that? Well, in Jeremiah 17, 9, I've got my Bible here and I've got my, my, my journal. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah 17, 9, he says the heart is deceitful and it's wicked. That's a paraphrase. You can look that up. But if you look up those original words in the Hebrew language, probably a better translation, I would say, would be polluted and feeble or sick. So from the moment that we're in the womb, we are a target for the enemy. Satan wants to cover you in lies. He doesn't want you to know who you are. He wants to believe that you are not powerful, that you can't do anything. You can't accomplish anything. And he wants to put a wedge between you and the Lord. So he pollutes your heart and he makes your heart sick and weak. That's what he does. I've, I've done sessions with people where they've gone back into the womb. They've saw, seen visions of being in the womb. And Jesus is telling them that because of the circumstances of their birth or something that was going on, that they began believing lies, even in the womb, the heart was taking inventory, even before the mind could comprehend. Isn't that amazing? But the next verse says that I, the Lord search your heart. He's our creator. He knows where to, where to find things that don't belong. He knows how to set things back in order. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can sit in your quiet time with Jesus and you can allow him to heal some of those broken places. My friend, I'm not sitting before you 
as someone who has it all together all the time. Like I've lived this life that is, uh, you know, grown up in perfection and, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's just not my story. Um, I'm not going to tell my whole story right now because I have it out there in a separate session, separate video. You can look that up on my YouTube channel, but I came from brokenness and it wasn't because I had horrible parents or I, it, it was because I was attacked by the enemy. The enemy knew what I was carrying inside of me, just like he knows what you're carrying inside of you. And he came to steal, kill and destroy. So how do you know if you have things going on from the enemy. First of all, do you have any behaviors or habits that you just can't kick? You know, a big one for me was people pleasing. I felt like I had to do everything everybody wanted me to do. Uh, very rarely did I say no, because I didn't feel like I was, I had the power to say no. I felt like that if they were asking me to do something that I must need to do it because I needed to serve fellow man. But it really... I was people pleasing and I wasn't taking a moment to step back and ask the Lord, Lord, is this what you want me to do? Jesus said, I only do what I see the father doing. Did that mean that sometimes he was going to have to say no? I'm sure because it wasn't what he saw the father doing at that moment. So we want to be like Jesus only do what we see the father doing. Somebody may be asking you to do something, but that's really uh, something that the father has for someone else rejection you constantly feel rejection like you you have people around you but you just feel like you have nobody you constantly feel like you don't belong uh, another one uh, a coping mechanism is food we run to food when we are sad or mad or bored or whatever or just to feel taken care of i used to like to go out to eat and fill my belly because it when i had that sensation it made me feel taken care of when it's really the Lord that takes care of me, pornography, believe it or not, that is huge, even in the church. And all that is that addiction to pornography is just a deep cry of our hearts for intimacy an intimacy that we're supposed to get from Jesus. So ask the Lord, take a moment. What are, are there any habits or behaviors that I have that I know are unbecoming to me that are not kingdom? And why do I do those things? Maybe you feel a block in getting closer to the Lord. Like you desire this closeness, this experiential intimacy with him. And you just feel like you're hitting a wall. What I find in, in ministry is that one of the biggest things for that, because it, it's lies in our heart that the enemy is planted about who God is and about who you are. Many of us feel like we're not good enough, even though in our mind, we know that's not what the world, the, the word says. But in our heart, we feel not good enough. So we have this, we have this block in getting closer to the Lord because we really deep in our heart, we feel like we're not good enough, or we believe lies about God. Like he's really not good, or he really doesn't have our best interest in mind, or he's really not a protector. And we know those things not to be true because we know that's not what the word says, but our heart is believing something else. And where did these lies come from? They came out of the traumas and betrayals and things that have happened to us as a, as a child and growing up. And the enemy took those opportunities to put those lies in our heart. The other thing is that uh, you might be having trouble purifying your heart is you just have a lack of peace. Peace is a fruit of the spirit and our, it's our inheritance from the Lord. He died, he paid for us to have peace. And so if you're not feeling peace, if you're feeling this angst, if you're feeling this striving, if you're feeling um, just out of sorts, then that is an, uh, a sign that maybe you need to work on your past trauma, that your heart is sick, that it's hurting did you know that your peace is not attached to out, outward circumstance? I think that's the number one thing that us as humans try to do is we try to make ourselves so comfortable because if everything around us is going great, then I will have peace inside. Well, that is a false peace. A peace from external circumstances is not true peace. True peace from Jesus is internal. 
And it comes no matter what's going on on the outside. It doesn't mean we won't have moments of grief, like I said, or anger or, or moments of emotion because things have happened. God has emotions too and feels those things as well. But if your peace is being robbed, then there may be work you need to do in your heart, beloved. Jesus said that in Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the, are the pure in heart for they shall see God. So let's go back to that body, soul, and spirit for just a minute. Have you ever had a, a wound that was so hurtful on your body, like a broken arm or some kind of pain that it was just unbearable and you couldn't do anything until you got that pain taken care of? It's usually when most of us end up in the ER, right? We need to get that thing taken care of as soon as possible. Well, when your soul hurts, even when you don't realize it, when you have pain residue from your past, you can't help others truly. You can't look outward. You can't look and truly see God because you're still looking at your pain. You're looking through a lens, of the things that have happened to you. And that's not a condemnation, my friend. That's not me throwing stones at you. That's me saying you need to go to the ER. <laughs> you need to see the great physician. You need to sit with Jesus and you need to let him heal you. And we'll talk about how to do that. How do you overcome? How do you start working on that pure heart? First of all, you want to have a willingness to open up those places I was sexually abused as a kid. And for a long time, I didn't tell people about that. It was shameful. I didn't figure there was a need to tell them. And maybe a lot of reasons there, there wasn't a need to tell them. But certainly there are other hurting people out there that, to, that need to know that they're not alone. And I needed to have the freedom to be able to tell people, hey, that happened to me too. Right? So we need to um, be able to open up our heart. And let those things out. Give Jesus access. Ask Jesus. Once you've opened your heart. to Jesus I want to give this to you. This hurtful thing. How do you feel. About what happened. Beloved just listen. Maybe he'll give you a vision. Maybe he'll give you words. Maybe you'll even start to feel sad. Or angry. That's another way the Lord communicates. He lets you feel what he's feeling. Just let him minister to you. That he's not the author of evil. Not everything comes out of his hand. A lot of times we have Job theology. Oh, everything comes out of God's hands. He allowed it for a purpose. <laughs> I could do a whole other podcast on Job, but I will say this. The Lord didn't give Satan permission to torture Job. Humanity did. It happened in the garden. And that's what God said in Job. He said, he's already in your hand. See, he didn't give Satan permission. He was just stating what was already true, that Satan already had access to Job. God actually called Job upright, called him a son. He loved Job thought a lot of him. Anyway, we'll move on. Another thing to ask Jesus once you've led him into that place of pain is, what lies did the enemy plant in my heart about myself when this happened? What lies did he plant about myself? Just listen. This is a good time to have like a journal and write down the things you feel like the Lord is saying, process those things with him. And then ask him, what lies did the enemy plant about you? What lies did the enemy plant about God in your heart? That he wasn't good, that he wasn't a protector. I don't know. It's limitless. The lies that the enemy can plant in hurtful circumstances. We become vulnerable. Another good question to ask Jesus is, Jesus, what should have happened instead? In your heart, 
Jesus, what did you want to happen? But because of man's free will and partnering with evil, this happened instead. Jesus, what was your will to happen to me in that circumstance? And friends, I know there's a lot of questions here. And I know these are good things to write down. So you remember when you're sitting alone with Jesus, I'll put a free worksheet on my website at piercedbylove.com. You can download that worksheet and it will help walk you through this process of healing with the Lord. That's our free gift to you. The next thing you want to do with Jesus is you want to forgive whoever hurt you. And if it was the choice you made that no one else was necessarily involved in, maybe you need to forgive yourself. Jesus has forgiven you. He's paid for you to be free. And then the next thing, oh, on forgiveness, um, there is so much there. I don't want to go too deep into it because it'll make this, this podcast longer. However, we have another podcast out there that's on forgiveness, what forgiveness is, what it is not, and even leading you through how to do um, a um, thorough forgiveness. So check that out. Um, the last one is always look for the goodness of God in all circumstances. Always look for his good. Anything that's bad that's happening to you, um, some of it is attacks of the enemy and some of it may be God leading you in a different direction. It just happens to hurt your heart where he's leading you. And it, sometimes it's hard to tell the difference, but that's why it's important to open up a conversation with him and let look for his goodness and let him speak into your circumstances. Um, beloved, I'll say this, don't try to make up theologies to explain things when God is not ready to share those things with you. It's okay if you ask, he loves for you to ask, but sometimes you're not ready for the truth or sometimes he knows you can't comprehend the truth. So don't start making up things because that just leads you down a rabbit hole of, of other hurtful theologies, but be okay with some mystery. And I know that goes against our human nature because we want to know everything. We, we don't like the unknown most times. But if we knew everything about God and his ways, and he wouldn't be much of a God, would he? Sometimes his ways are mysterious and we don't quite understand. But what a beautiful offering. If you can praise him, you can worship him, and you can set those questions on the shelf until you're ready to receive them and he's ready to give them. That's beautiful. Remember I was talking about Jeremiah 17, where it says that our hearts are, I'm going to say, sick. And they're weak. And they're polluted. Well, if you go to the verses right above that, let me read that to you. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by waters. And that spreads out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat comes. But her leaf shall be green and she and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Oh, that's beautiful. The one who finds hope in the Lord, you're planted by the water, your roots are spread out, you're healthy and growing. When the heat of the sun comes, when the drought comes, you're not worried about it because you know the truth of who the Lord is and who the, tr the truth of who you are and you're confident in him. When these traumas of the world happen and everybody is panicking, it seems you can be the one that doesn't panic. You can be the one that has peace throughout the storm when you're planted by the river that is the Lord. You know, talking about the pure heart, Jesus said to the Pharisees that they needed to clean the inside of their cup. They were so worried about the outside and how people saw them and they wanted the fancy clothes and they wanted the long prayers and they wanted to sit at the head of the table in the feasts but they didn't want to clean their heart. When we allow Jesus to clean the inside, that's when our soul begins to align with our spirit. 
the spirit that's merged with Jesus. And then we become beautiful partners with the Lord. And then follow your heart becomes a little more feasible. Although I prefer follow the spirit, right? Our heart posture in all of this should be love. To love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. It's not a military command. It's not if you don't or else. It's that loving the Lord is a delight and a joy. And it will bring you the abundance of life that Jesus paid for. God is jealous for your heart. He's jealous for all of it. He wants to take the traumas. He wants to take the pain. He wants to take the lies. He wants to take the things that have happened to you that didn't define who you were. They shouldn't. You are so much more beloved. And he's jealous for you to know that. And he's your creator. And so he wants every part of your heart because he wants to touch every part of your heart with his life. If you're a lamp and he's the electrical outlet, you have to plug in. Plug in every day that the source of your life would light you up and you would be a light to the world. And it also lights you up inside and brings you joy. I want to say that following Jesus is not a commitment. It's not a commitment. It's a surrender. It's a laying things down at his feet. In fact, I don't even prefer the word surrender because that has such a military connotation to it. And military is not wrong, my friends. God's kingdom can be likened to military and to an army. And it is in the, in the Bible in many, in many places. But if we don't have that foundation of love in place, then we're just looking at God as a commander and not as a father. So I prefer the word succumb. We succumb to his love. So I encourage you today to end this podcast. Succumb to the jealous love of the Lord. Give him all of your heart. Let him search you out. Let him purify you. Let him pure off, prune off branches. It doesn't feel fun sometimes. But the outcome is so good. It'll leave you nothing but abundant fruit. Thank you for listening today. If you want to find out more about Pierced by Love and what we do, visit us at piercedbylove.com. You can contact us through our website. There's some resources there for purchase and also some resources that are free to you. So enjoy the rest of your day and blessings. <music>